starting from the Ashanti region, where officers of the Afanon North Co uh, Electoral Commission have been gutted by fire around 3.20 a.m. on Monday. Reports say that all documents in the office have been destroyed along with air conditioners and computers. The fire has since been put out by personnel of the Ghana National Fire Service um, and are still at the scene as investigations have been launched into the fire outbreak. Now, fire personnel had to bring the fire under control within an hour to stop it from spreading to officers of the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj, and the National Health Insurance, NHIA, NHIA, which are all in the same building. And William Ebansinko, Miss TV3, is a Shanti Regional Correspondent. He's currently at the scene of the fire and has joined us to give us an update. Evans, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. You girls uh, were not spared in um, this dawn inferno. But let's just get closer, more closer to the problem here. If you come here, I mean, we're talking about the server office, um, a lot, you can still see some smoke coming out of the debris. I mean, the server were also, or was also affected. Well, I'm only assuming that perhaps the GC might have lost um, some important um, information or data as far as this particular um, inferno is concerned. Well, just an assumption, we will be speaking to the you see, director, um, to tell us if, if that is the reality on the ground. But I've seen a number of documents that have been um, destroyed. Well, I've seen um, a card here. Well, very, very, I mean, a number of documents. I mean, huge documents um, destroyed by the fire. And uh, I've also counted about 18 generator sets that were gutted as a result of the fire disaster. But let's get, let's get closer to the fire service and then speak to them um, if they will be able to tell us um, what m might have caused this particular fire. But even before we speak to the regional um, fire officer, let's speak to the GC um, director here. Um, sir, yeah, of course, he is the deputy Ashanti regional director of the Electoral Commission. You might have lost a lot of things. Yes, we, we virtually lost everything except the ballot boxes and the, the voting screens. Mm. So will, will that affect the uh, electoral process? You know, we are in a crucial year, and uh, I would just want to know if it will affect the electoral process. Um, for those who want to transfer their vote, those who want to do proxy voting, it will temporarily affect them in the, in the meantime. But for the actual voting, details of every voter is stored in the database in Accra. So we can always retrieve the information of every voter that is, that is stored with us in Accra. Despite the fact that the server also um, was destroyed. Yeah, the server is used to transmit the information of voters. But we have already done the transmission. So what is captured during the limited registration and then the continued registration, everything is stored in the database in Accra. Oh, so you made mention of those who are going to do proxy voting. So how soon are you going to put uh, things in place to ensure that they are also not disenfranchised? Well, I've come here on a fact, fact finding mission and I'll report to my director. I will communicate to Accra and then we see how we can reconstruct the office for work to go on. Mm. All right, so let, well, let's get closer to the fire service and then speak to Mr. Atokosai, the district fire officer. We will speak to him and then we will also speak to the regional fire officer. Sir, um, have you been able to unravel the cause of fire? Um, it has been um, investigated. Uh, we have conducted interviews in our interrogation and looking at what is involved, it will take time. To, uh, uh, there are so many theorists on board, but then we'd have to still investigate to be sure so that we can determine the actual cause of fire. Mm, I mean, we, 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 we're talking about your response to this particular situation. Would you say that you acted swiftly? Yeah, um, uh, Tepa Fire Station acted swiftly. Um, it was discovered by Station Lookout. You know, firemen don't sleep. Um, when they come on shift, all right, there is always somebody on guard. It is true guard duties that he... Um, saw the smoke coming from the ceiling and he promptly responded to the fire, broke into the building and even rescued someone who is trapped in the building. So we were prompt 
in the response. So I must commend the uh, Tepa Fire Station for doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Samako is the Ashanti Regional um, Fire Officer. Sir, uh, your men are saying that they acted swiftly. What one would say from a layman perspective, if it was swift, we wouldn't have recorded um, such huge damage. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, the fire was not reported earlier. You know, they saw it, you know, when they saw the, the smoke and the flames billowing from the ceiling. So that was how they, uh, you know, you know, they acted. And they saw the, you know, the smoke around the 328 and by 330 they were here. Mm. Would you say, from your preliminary investigation, would you say that something was lacking as far as this particular office was concerned and that is why we, we, we are seeing this huge disaster? Yeah, for now it is too early in the day to come out with uh, what uh, might have actually caused the fire. But then we are still doing uh, our investigation and uh, we'll, we'll definitely come up with the cause. Mm. All right, so we have been speaking to the two um, firefighters. I'm talking about the Ashanti Regional uh, Fire Officer, Mr. Semeko. We also spoke to Mr. Atokosa, who is a district fire officer here. So as you can see from the screens, lots of uh, materials uh, were not spared as far